All right, so I think um, we'll get started now. So welcome to another year of CID. Um, this is the 2019-20 Collaborative Innovation Development Grant from SHRF. Um, I'm Danielle, I'm the Funding Programs Officer. I think I've been with this program for a couple years now, so any returning applicants will know who I am and welcome to any newbies. So just to give you an idea of what this information session is going to look like, um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of who SHRF is, just in case you don't know. Uh, then I'm going to go into the program overview, so that's the good information you guys want to hear about. Important dates, so make sure you have your calendars open and ready. Um, we'll get into the grant funding, our eligibility, the application process, and review process, because that's always good to know. And then um, I'll be giving tips kind of throughout just what I've seen in the last couple of years to help you out and then we'll go with a Q&A. So um, please feel free to send me questions throughout um, the presentation using the Q&A area. Uh, if I don't answer, it's not that I haven't seen it, it just might be coming up later. But if it is a question um, that's pertinent to that slide, I will go ahead and answer that. So just so you know, so SHRF, um, our, we invest in research that will contribute to the improved health of Saskatchewan citizens through a high-performing health system with a robust, robust culture of health research and innovation. Um, so we accomplish this purpose through our strategic goals, which is to strengthen research capacity and competitiveness, to increase investment in research and innovation, and to align with um, our research with stakeholder needs. As you may see, it's kind of changed over the years. We're currently working on updating our strategy, and this is the work that we've been doing with our new purpose and with our strategic goals. So something that SHRF continues to do, and I think we're very proud of, is the scope of health research. We try to stay very broad. Um, so as in previous years, we work to fund from basic to applied within the clinical health systems and policy, biomedical and population health. Um, by doing this, we hope to then fund an array of projects that help Saskatchewan citizens and their health. Uh, that means that you may be doing basic biomedical, but you may also be doing basic health system and policy, and maybe you're at the other end of biomedical where you're working towards that applied and working in with clinical. Um, if it relates back to health and um, Saskatchewan citizens, um, we have been able to fund a, an array of um, programs and grants. So looking at the program purpose, um, this quote elegantly captures the strengths of the grant, identifying that the strength of the grant is that it allows the development of creative solutions to complex health issues. It supports pilot testing of such solutions, allows improvement of research methods and strategy, and supports innovation and creativity in health research projects. Um, so in the application package that we released late last week, uh, you'll see that the purpose of the CID grant program is to provide seed money to support collaborative, interdisciplinary, and innovative research activities, representing first steps toward the pursuit of more comprehensive funding. So funding is intended to foster creativity, novelty, and innovation in original research that has the potential to benefit the health of Saskatchewan residents and strengthen future funding applications. Proposed projects are supported by a sound rationale and feasible research plan, but they're not necessarily preliminary data. Um, so just to give you a brief overview of what last year looked like, we had 35 applications received and of those 35, 16 were funded um, and five of those that were funded were with uh, through partnered grants. Um, as you'll see later on in this presentation, we have a partner again this year, which is great because then that expands our funding envelopes. Um, so last year's success rate was at 46%, which is pretty high. Um, so that's always good to hear. So within that purpose, we have um, a very fully loaded acronym for CID where each word does describe part of the purpose and objectives of the grant. So when it comes to the collaborative, um, this is a team grant where you are to have a minimum of three team members with interdisciplinary expertise, building relationships within and beyond the academic community. Um, for innovation, the grant must focus on one of the following. You may be um, in the development of a novel research question, the use or development of novel approaches or methodologies, including knowledge mobilization methodologies, 
or the application of existing methods or concepts to novel research questions in new ways or in new settings. Um, so it's pretty broad. We have a definition of innovation in the application package as well that you can take a look at, um, but we are broad within our innovation. And then when it comes to the development, so this funding is to be used to support scalable research projects. So they can be pilots, feasibility, or translational studies that position the teams for success in obtaining larger, more substantial funding from sources other than SHRF within three years following the initiation of SHRF funding. Um, so just a note for subsequent funding applications, this could include submission to peer-reviewed competitions at the provincial, national, or international level. It could be funding offered by a business or industry, health organizations, health service providers, or others as appropriate. Um, but the goal of this grant is to be innovative, to be collaborative with a new or existing team, um, and the focus is to take this research, this one-year grant, and move it forward into something bigger and more scalable. So we have a couple of things that are new. Um, I'm going to touch on the partnership and priority funding in the upcoming slides. So I'm just going to move straight to point three. Um, this year, there has been changes to the application layout, and they're fairly significant. Um, so please be aware, especially if you may be reapplying. Um, or if you have applied before, but it might have been a couple of years since you've seen the application. Um, so feedback from applicants and reviewers regarding the application, what we've done is we've updated it so there aren't so many moving pieces and that you're not um, having to be repetitive about, say, your impact or the innovation. Um, many of the requirements are still there, but they've been inserted into the proposal. Um, so the innovation statement itself has been moved into the proposal. The impact statement, um, you may have remembered that you had to fill out a whole other tab. We've now brought um, all of this into the proposal. Uh, so you, the proposal pages have also been expanded, so you now have a maximum of eight. Um, this is to give you a chance to have a more concise application, which will help you as the applicant for writing it, but will also help the reviewer so then they can see everything in one place, giving you the chance to write, um, I guess, like a strong, strong story about what your research is and how it's going to work and the impact it'll have. So we're hoping that this will make your lives easier, both as a applicant and a reviewer. Um, you will see though that we have expanded um, by adding sex and gender. So SHRF is starting to implement sex and gender to applications. We're following um, the CIHR questions. So if you have applied to CIHR before, these questions shouldn't be too new to you. Um, and you'll be asked if you've made considerations to either, um, to either sex or gender, and then you'll be asked why or why not. Um, so in your proposal, make sure you identify this as well as review criteria for this SHRF CID now has a point regarding this component. Um, this is just to go forward and this should, we hope, help you when you do apply for subsequent funding. You've already identified the sex and gender um, now that CIHR is also uh, implementing that into their review. This will just be something that you won't even have to think about and readjust when you go to apply for further funding because you already did it in your seed funding with, um, with SHRF. Um, one thing too, just to note, it's not on the application package or in this presentation, but please be aware that CCV has made changes to their help desk, um, and we can talk about that further. They now have a centralized help station, so before you may have sent me questions regarding uh, getting your password and everything like that, I can no longer make those changes, but we do have in the application package who to contact and when, and they are aware of our deadlines. Um, so hopefully if you have a last minute urgency, they'll be able to help you out prior to the deadline. But if there's any issues, you can always contact me. So I'd like to announce that we have a funding partner on um, this year's CID. The Lung Association Saskatchewan has come back for another year. So we're very excited to have them on. Um, they've been a great partner with SHRF and we always appreciate having you guys funding grants with us. So the Lung Association Saskatchewan has a mission to improve lung health one breath at a time and a vision of healthy lungs for everyone. The LAS has a role in improving respiratory health and the overall quality of life in those with a lived experience of lung disease through programs, education, research training, research training, treatment and prevention of lung disease. Um, so the partner focus area this year, the Lung Association Saskatchewan has identified three areas of focus. 
The first one regards Indigenous people's health. So, um, and this is all listed in the application package as well, but I'll just give you an overview. What they're looking to do is invest in research that thoughtfully considers how to better serve Indigenous peoples of Saskatchewan regarding lung health um, that is important to LAS. Research that is relevant to Indigenous people of Saskatchewan and incorporates both traditional Indigenous practices and demonstrates impact in lung health and lung health practices is an essential step in providing culturally sensitive health care. So that's the first focus. Second focus is cannabis use and impact on lung health. There are significant public health concerns associated with cannabis. LAS is concerned about health impacts of cannabis use, especially on lung health, and encourages continued research into the health effects of cannabis use as the benefits, risks, and safety of cannabis use for medical purposes requires further study. And the third focus is regarding patient and caregiver education. Patients and caregivers have key roles in self-managing lung disease to live as well as possible. So the LAS is interested in the research that examines the kind of patient and caregiver education that is essential to better self-manage lung disease and is especially interested in research that examines the health outcomes related to patient and caregiver education. Um, so if you are interested in the funding from um, the combined funding with LAS and SHRF, you'll want to focus in one of these areas or more. Maybe you're going to look at patient and caregiver education and um, Indigenous people's health, or you might be looking at cannabis use and patient and caregiver education. You're more than welcome to combine. Um, it just makes sure that you are looking at these focus areas. Um, so the partner grants will also be going through SHRF's review criteria, which I will discuss later on in this presentation. But on top of that, um, there is some relevance criteria that ne you need to keep in mind from the LAS. So make sure that the research proposal addresses one or more of the focus areas identified in the application package. So that's what we just talked about. Um, make sure that the research proposal has potential for a significant contribution to the improvement of people's lung health in Saskatchewan, and it relates to the development of more effective health services, programs, or policies. That's where that impact will be key in your proposal. Um, make sure that research proposal has plans for knowledge dissemination and exchange. Again, you'll have a chance to discuss that in your proposal in the application. And make sure that the research proposal aligns directly with the mission and vision of LAS. Um, you will have that information in the application package. It was also just discussed a little bit earlier in this presentation. Um, so you'll be able to come back to both this presentation and to the application package. Uh, so when also alongside our partner funding, we do have one grant that will be funded that has a priority focus. Um, and this focuses on technology solutions within the Saskatchewan healthcare system. So this may come from the open CID envelope or from partner dollars if it's relevant. So if you have a technology solution that is also related to one of the three focus areas from the Lung Association Saskatchewan, it may come from those dollars or it may just come from CID. And I'll discuss dollars in the upcoming slides. So um, one thing with this priority funding, you'll be following the current CID eligibility, so making sure you have three team members, it's innovative, it's, de it's a developmental grant, everything like that, but there's also a couple of additional eligibility requirements. Um, first off, there is the team member requirement. So you still need to have three, but one member must be a researcher. One member must be a knowledge user who is a healthcare provider. So they're within the healthcare system. And one must be a knowledge user who is an industry partner. So someone who um, may be representing a company, maybe an individual. Um, we do have a definition of what an industry partner is within our definitions, um, but they'll be able to help you take that technology to the next step alongside your healthcare provider who will be able to implement it. Um, and then the research focus, as said, is it needs to focus on a technology solution and it has to be within the Saskatchewan healthcare system. So that's our funding priority. Um, just so you guys are aware of that. And then we also have our partner funding. So there's lots of different ways you can take this CID this year. Looking at important dates, so I hope you all have your calendars up and ready. Um, as you know, the competition launched on June 13th. So that was both with the application package and the RMS. You are now able to open up uh, Scherf's RMS and go to the eligibility stage. We have an eligibility check cutoff of September 5th. Um, you will see that dates are a little bit earlier. This has to do with our review period, um, but I think this will still give you substantial time 
to complete the application. With the eligibility check cut off, please remember that you can open up your eligibility and submit it to me by next week and I could review it and say, yeah, you're good to go. And then you'll have the application starting by the end of June. So I strongly suggest instead of waiting till that September 5th deadline, um, that get that eligibility in if you have those three team members. I do know sometimes you have to work over the summer and um, get that team together. But if, if you don't have to wait, I wouldn't because then you can have that application open up early. Um, after September 5th, we will not be accepting any more eligibility checks. Therefore, you cannot open an application. So get it in. And if you can't get it in that day and you're having issues with the RMS, please let me know as soon as possible and we can work it out. Um, not sure if we're here to support you, but we do have to hold our deadlines too. So then the application deadline is going to be October 31st um, at 4.30 p.m. as always, right at the end of the day. Again, if you're having some issues, let me know. Um, I think we've worked out most of the bugs with the RMS, but you never know. Technology does things that are funny. Uh, and the application deadline, that means you have to submit everything within the application by that time. And that includes all, um, make sure you have your signatures, make sure you have your team members, everything like that. So you have a full application for that deadline. We also have our CV update deadline. Um, this is for all team members. If you have any publications or funding results that show up after the application deadline, you're able to submit that to us by January 9th. And then we share that with the review committee. The funding decisions, uh, same time, those will be in February on the 13th, unless something weird happens. Um, so just keep an eye out, maybe mark your calendar that that'll be the day you get results. And then we have a funding start date of March 1st, 2020, as usual. Um, it's very important to check with your institution for internal deadlines and allow time to obtain signatures. Again, um, you need to have everything completed for that application to be submitted. So I would right now ask your institutions when they need to have your application so that they can do their internal review and get you that signature. So looking at the grant funding, um, the envelope this year is 400,000 available. So that's enough to fund at least eight grants. Um, matching and in-kind contributions are encouraged when it comes to your application. So if you ask for 50,000 from us, because um, you're allowed to ask for up to 50,000, but maybe you have another 20,000 of in-kind, you'll be able to put that into the application. And we fixed the bug from last year, um, so it won't cut off the total for you. So you'll be able to say that the grant may cost 70,000, but from sure if you're asking for 50. I hope that made sense. Um, and then, so on top of the open envelope, we also have our partnered envelope with the Lung Association Saskatchewan. So that's an additional 200,000 that'll be available, which is enough to fund at least four grants. So in total this year, we do have 600,000 available for CID. And please remember again that there is a funding priority where we're looking to fund one grant from either of those envelopes, focusing on the technology within the Saskatchewan healthcare system. The grant duration, so as in previous years, you have 12 to 18 months. It is a short grant, but the goal is, is that we want you to get that seed funding, get that initial research going um, so that you can apply for subsequent funding. Um, if you, so the grant provided by SHRF is for one year, just the way that our system and processes work. If you do have an 18 month timeline though, and you are successfully funded, what you'll need to do is complete our annual reporting that we talk about nonstop um, at the one year mark saying that you just have an automatic extension um, of the extra six months due to your timelines. So that's again, just something that we'll discuss if you are funded. And when you're writing your application, you can go forward and have a maximum of 18 months in your timeline. The review panelists are aware of this, um, so it's okay if it does go over that one year. So as you know, uh, last year we did away with the LOI and we've introduced the eligibility check. Um, so the purpose of the eligibility check, which is now on, I believe, all of our applications except for the research connections, um, we check that the application is submitted to the appropriate funding opportunity where the applicants have identified how their work is relevant to the purpose and objectives of the funding program. Um, this part is really important when you do your eligibility check because this is what um, us as program managers really look at is to make sure that you've looked at the purpose and objectives of the grant and you're tying your research back. So take a little bit extra time with this one because we'll probably, if you don't, we'll ask you to go back and redo it. So 
if you can get through that, say why this grant that you're applying for, um, this research idea fits with this grant and then it's done and we don't have to do any revisions. Um, this is eligibility check for the principal applicant and or team requirements and so that they're met based on the listed criteria. Um, at eligibility, make sure that you have your minimum of three team members. You can then make changes afterward. Uh, we do understand that things happen between now and the end of October, uh, but you do need to have those three minimum team members. So don't submit your eligibility until they've all accepted the invitation. And then we also look at the principal applicant and do they fulfill all of the requirements. Again, that definition is in the is listed in the definitions page in the application package about what a principal applicant needs to have in order to be the uh, principal applicant on the application. Um, the eligibility, eligibility check is to facilitate the creation of the review committees and search for the appropriate reviewers with the expertise to the proposed project. So we start looking at the information you've given us so that we can start creating review committees um, a bit earlier. As the closer it gets to the review, the harder it is to recruit reviewers. Um, this is to inform partners of interest regarding the partnered funding. So if you are interested in the Lung Association Saskatchewan partnership, you'll want to write your eligibility check to that. So making sure that you're identifying the focus area and the um, partner criteria. And then it's to formalize the process of eligibility so that decisions made by SHRF are available to applicants and reviewers. Um, what that means too is now we have an area where I can write right in there if there is a decision made about your eligibility. It's now on the application and the reviewers don't have to question it at the meeting because they see it right away. It's on the application and they can go forward with a clear mind and not questioning why this application maybe shouldn't go forward. So um, just taking a quick look at eligibility. So with the principal applicant, as I said, we do have the definition in the application package, um, but just going over it, you must be self-directed and autonomous regarding the research activities. You have to be able to hold peer reviewed funds and publish research results. You need to be affiliated with a Saskatchewan institution that has a memorandum of understanding with SHRF. Uh, we have that listed on our website and it's also in our awards guides. As of now, we have six MOUs, which you can see um, on those two areas. You must be obliged to conform to institutional regulations concerning the con conduct of research, supervision of trainees, and employment of staff paid with SHRF funding. And you must reside and work in Saskatchewan during the funding period of the grant. Um, that one's pretty important. We're a provincial funding agency, so we want to see everything, um, the majority of work happening in the province. When it comes to team members, there needs to be a minimum of three applicants that are based in Saskatchewan once you've hit that, and that includes the principal applicant. So once you've hit those three, you can have members throughout the country, maybe internationally, anything like that, as long as it's justified. One team member must meet principal applicant requirements as I just discussed. Um, interdisciplinary expertise needs to happen. There's no maximum on team members. Um, and as I said, after the minimum is met, it can be from within or outside of Saskatchewan. Something, excuse me, that you should remember though is for every team member you have, you have to have a justification. Um, the reviewers do question when they see quite a few people on the grant, why is each person there? So make sure that you've made it very clear. And again, they don't have any questions. We do encourage to have early career and established investigators for mentorship and capacity building. Um, this is a great grant for early career researchers um, to maybe be the P, the principal applicant, um, and gets the chance to see what that's like if you haven't really done a lot of that, because then you are supported with co-principal and co-applicants who may be a bit more established. Um, it's, and that goes the opposite way too, as an established researcher who's a principal applicant, this is a great time to pull on one or two early career researchers who have that um, interdisciplinary expertise and you'll be able to mentor them and help build the research in Saskatchewan. And as we said, it's open to new and established investigators or collaborations too. Um, you may be a collaboration that's been around for many years, but you have a new idea and you'd like to branch out and try something different, that's fine. Or maybe it's a new collaboration, you guys have never worked together um, and you'd like to give it a try. This is a grant where you can be a bit more risky. So um, when it comes to multiple applications, um, the principal and co-principal applicants can only submit one application per competition. 
but you can submit multiple applications in the role of co-applicant in addition to one application as principal or co-principal applicant. So um, just an example, if Jane is the principal applicant on her application, she can be invited to Jim's application, but only as a co-applicant. We do go through a screening process, and if I see that Jane is a principal applicant on one grant and she's also a co-principal on Jim's grant, she'll have to choose which grant and she'll be removed from the other one. Um, also with renewals and reapplications, so funding is non-renewable. We have um, a definition and discussion in the application package regarding renewals. It's under the eligibility requirements on page six. Um, previously funded CID projects are not eligible to apply for next step funding. So if you'd gotten a grant for us, from us in the last five years, um, those next steps cannot be applied for with CID. You have to go to another program. If new avenues of research emerge from a previous funded CID grant, though, these may be considered a new application. Um, when in doubt, just send me an email and then we can have a discussion. I'm happy to meet over the phone um, or in person and we can discuss if this is a new idea or if it's a possible um, renewal and go from there. Uh, and also just one note with reapplication, it is important to identify if this is, if it's a reapplication from a previous year, even if it's a brand new grant, um, it just sometimes the reviewers, they do remember previous applications. Um, so it might just be in their head questioning if you don't say it's a reapplication, even to say like it's a new team, we've scrapped the idea from last year. That again, stops them from questioning things. The, the less questioning that the reviewers have, the better for you. So when applying to the CID, there's a two-step process. There's the eligibility check, which I've already gone in depth with, and then there's the application. And all of this information and all of the questions that are asked in both steps are in the application um, package under the application instructions. So all steps must be completed and submitted using SHRF's online research management system. Um, you may have already heard me say the RMS, and that's found at sherf.smartsimple.ca. Um, it's the principal applicant's responsibility to ensure that all requested information is complete, properly formatted, and submitted by deadline. Um, you have to make sure that you're, as principal applicant, you're available on October 31st to hit that submit button because no one else can do it for you. So please keep that in mind so that you're not calling Sherf sure at 428 saying, we can't get a hold of the principal applicant and I don't know how to submit. Plan ahead, please. Um, so your go-to guides this year, so we have the 2019-20 Collaborative Innovation Development Application Package. Uh, we always go with the most recent CID application package to use, um, even if you've already been funded. So don't look at the 2018 or the 2017. Um, also use the awards guide for funding application and management. Uh, we updated that last year. Um, it's updated yearly in usually around November, December. That's on our website as well. You'll want to make sure that you're using the SHRF research management system, as I just discussed. And a good place to maybe bookmark um, is SHRF.ca resources. That's where you're going to find a lot of information for your applicants um, regarding if you need the different template for the CV, um, if you're needing information about the CCV and where to find contacts, um, and just other helpful tips and tricks on there. And then finally, there is sherf.ca opportunities. Uh, you may have already been there if you knew about the CID. That's where you'll go to start this application if you don't know how to get to the RMS. Um, but it's also a good place to look for any future opportunities and what's going on. We also launched the Sprout Grant this year. Um, that information session is tomorrow at 1030. Uh, but you can go check that out at sherf.ca slash opportunities or you can look at our events page and sign up for there. Um, as these two run side by side, it may be of interest to you to apply to the Sprout versus the CID and vice versa. So um, when it comes to our review process, applications are reviewed in a competitive peer review process according to SHRF's Research Funding Peer Review Committee guidelines. That's all up on our website too. Please take a look at it. It's always a good idea to understand our review process and how applications are funded here. Um, applications are assigned to a multidisciplinary committee. Members are from outside Saskatchewan, but within Canada, so we have from coast to coast. Um, it's very important to remember that they are a multidisciplinary committee. We have two committees, the biomedical, um, and then we have the socio-health clinical uh, one as well. And those two have that broad 
mandate of biomedical and then everybody else. Um, but from in there, they may not be completely specialized within your area. So when you're writing your application, make sure that you're writing it to a multidisciplinary committee. Um, and then applicants will receive written comments after the review period. You'll get that from two lead reviewers and where possible uh, two external reviewers. So we decide external reviewers, if we find out that the entire committee has a low comfort with your application, we will bring in those expertise, um, but usually we'll have high to medium comfort on most applications and that's where we have those two leads uh, to review your application. And all that information, like I said, is in the funding peer review committee guidelines. So something to keep in mind too is the um, review criteria. So this is what the reviewers will be using to look at each of your applications um, and what the weighting is. So as you can see, we have each of the areas that are on, in that acronym of CID. So the innovation, you have to make sure it's 20% and are you fulfilling the innovation objective of the grant? Is it a new problem or a new way of solving an old problem or is it something in between? They'll be looking at how original, unique, creative or breakthrough it is. When it comes to the collaboration and expertise, again, that's 20%. Do you have the right team members on the team to solve your problem? Is everyone playing a crucial role? Are their roles clear and is engagement um, evident? Where appropriate, are you engaging knowledge users? Uh, keep in mind the experience and track record of your team and show the committee that you have the team that will complete the proposed research. Um, it's really important uh, if you think that you may need a stat statistician, um, have them on there because then they're not questioning it. I'm always coming back to don't let the committee question what you're doing. When it comes to development and impact, um, answer the question of what will the research do? How will it impact health in Saskatchewan? Keep coming back to how we do know that sometimes, um, obviously, it will have a broader reach than Saskatchewan, but always tie it back because that's what we want the committee members to look at is that impact to Saskatchewan. How will your team share the knowledge gained from the research? That's where that um, KT plan comes in handy. They like to see that and they like to see a clear plan. Does it engage with the identified target audience? Be descriptive about your future funding plans. Um, as well. So if you're applying to CIHR, instead of saying I'm going to apply to the, I don't know, 2022-23 CIHR uh, project grant, go a step further and identify exactly which grant you're applying to and why you're applying to that one. Why would this, why is this the best grant to apply to for this seed funding? Um, again, then they're not just saying, oh, well, they wrote something in to do a check mark. They actually thought it through. And then there's also the quality and feasibility. So that's that important core information regarding um, making sure your research aligns with the program purpose, you're addressing partnerships where appropriate, you're being clear about the objectives, goals, and the targeted audience, you're making sure that your methods are appropriate and clearly explained. Um, this is very important is to have a very clear methodology um, and making sure that you're not diving into um, focus areas and staying away from um, uh, acronyms that may not be known to the multidisciplinary committee. Again, if they don't know what they mean, um, that doesn't help them when they are reading your application. Show that your research environment is supportive and that you've thought through where you'll apply for comprehensive funding and why. Um, also make sure that if there's any pitfalls to clearly state those, um, that is something that our committees are very good at looking for and making sure that you've thought out if uh, plan A doesn't work, we've got B, C, D, and E just in case. And then finally, make sure that you've written a grant that leaves little to no questions to the committee, um, watching for spelling and grammar and that all math is correct. Again, to uh, reviewers, because they're reviewing quite a few applications, um, don't let them find something nitpickety. Don't let them, um, your grantsmanship is very important. Writing something that's clear and understandable, um, those are usually the strong grants and those are the ones that they get excited about because they understand what you're talking about and they didn't have to go through grammar issues and spelling issues. And also if your budget adds up, that's always very helpful because then they might get stuck on that. Um, so that's it. That was all I have right now. It's kind of an overview of the application package. Um, you can start sending in questions using the Q&A box 
If you don't have any, again, all of this information is in the application package, but feel free to contact me um, at my phone number or at my email or to give Tanya a call. She's the RMS guru here. So if you're having any issues with our application, um, pack, uh, application on the RMS, you're more than welcome to probably contact her first, but I can always try to help you out too. Um, yeah, so I'll stay online for a bit, see if there's any questions right now. There isn't, so maybe that's a good sign or a bad sign. I don't know. And thanks everyone for tuning in.